Amen. Luke 8, 4 through 14. I'm reading from the message version, not King James. And the word of God reads this way. As they went from town to town, a lot of people joined in and traveled along. He addressed them using this story. A farmer went out to sow a seed. Some of it fell on the road. It was trampled down and the birds ate it. Other seed fell in the gravel. It sprouted but withered because it didn't have good roots. Other seed fell in the weeds. The weeds grew with it and strangled it. Other seed fell in rich earth and produced a bumper crop. Are you listening to this? I mean, really listening. His disciples asked, why did you tell this story? He said, you've been given insight into God's kingdom. You know how it works. There are others who need stories. But even with stories, some of them aren't going to get it. Their eyes are open, but don't see a thing. Their ears are open, but don't hear a thing. This story is about some of those people. The seed is the word of God. Somebody say, the seed is the word of God. The seeds on the road are those who hear the word, but no sooner do they hear it than the devil snatches it from them so they won't believe and be saved. The seeds in the gravel are those who hear with enthusiasm, but the enthusiasm doesn't go very deep. It's only another fad. And the moment there's trouble, it's gone. And the seed that fell in the weeds, well, these are the ones who hear but then the seed is crowded out and nothing comes of it as they go about their lives worrying about tomorrow, making money and having fun. But the seed, somebody say seed, in the good earth. These are the good hearts who seize the word and hold on no matter what, sticking with it until there's a harvest. Can somebody say, I ain't letting go until I get my harvest. Can you hear me now? Look at somebody beside and say, can you hear me now? Y'all may be seated in the presence of the Lord. There was a commercial back in the day, I think it was Verizon Wireless, wasn't it? Where that man kept walking around talking about, can you hear me now? Why was he saying that over and over again? Because people who did not have the right provider, y'all, I'm preaching already. People who did not have the right provider did not have a good connection. And some folk don't have a good connection because they're not close to the right provider. Some folk don't have a good connection because they're not close to the tower. As a matter of fact, I, I would dare say that some of us in here right now, even though we're in church, our connection is bad. And, and, and God wants to speak to you. God is still speaking, but sometimes you can't hear him because your connection is bad. Sometimes when I'm on a phone call, Calvin, and, 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 and I have a bad connection or it cuts off abruptly, one of the things I do is I call the person back. I says, what's the last thing you heard me say? Some of y'all have been disconnected from God for a while now, and God, he ain't mad about it, but he wants to ask you a question. What's the last thing you heard me say? And many of us can't hear God, not only because our connection is bad, but we ain't read his word in a while. Y'all know how we used to open up church. I said, this is my Bible. God speaks to me through this Bible. When it's open, God speaks to me. When it's shut, I hear God saying, can you hear me now? We call everybody but God. When we're going through something, we call everybody but God and use God as a last resort. And God says, why didn't you call me? And the truth of the matter is, the reason you haven't called him is because your connection ain't been that good. Look at your neighbor and say, you need the right provider. I'm not talking about T-Mobile. I'm not talking about at and I'm not talking about Verizon. I'm not talking about your cricket phone. I'm talking about your connection with the living God. The closer you are to the tower, the better your connection. More than ever, we need to hear a word from God. Would y'all agree? The way the world, how crazy it is right now, raise your hand if you need to hear from God. Have you ever been in a place in your life where you wish that you could just have a conversation with God? The way that God has and continues to speak to his children is through his word. One of the questions that many people have today is, 
Does God still speak to us? Is God's word, the Bible, still relevant? The prophet Isaiah said it this way, Isaiah 48, the grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of our Lord shall what? Stand forever. The number one best-selling book of all times is the Bible. It is estimated that over 100 million copies of the Bible are sold or given away every year. Did y'all hear what I just said? Every year, 100, 100 million copies of the Bible are sold, and there's an average of 6.8 Bibles in every American household. The Bible is the best-selling book of all time, outselling all its rivals year in and year out, decade after decade. Gideon's International, y'all know that Bible in your hotel drawer that you never read. The Bible is available, that's, that Bible is given away every second. Every second, a Gideon Bible is given away. The Bible is available in all the part in 2,426 languages. If we have so much access to the Bible, what's the problem? It's a couple of things. First, we've got to have faith, as Pastor Dana told us last Sunday. We've got to have faith to believe that God said it. And secondly, we have to be able to receive it. Can you hear me now? Watch this. It's not enough to have it. But do you believe it? If we believe it, why are you jumping on the phone asking other people for what you already asked God for? If you believe it, why are you picking up your horoscope? If you believe it, why are you even entertaining tarot cards? If God's word is true, why ain't you standing on it? Rick Warren said that most people are receptive to the word of God only when life is no longer working for them. Some of y'all got too much money in your bank account to listen to the word of God. Some of y'all still got a job so you don't feel like you need to listen. But I want to talk to most of us who've ever hit the dead end and life has ever ran you over and you were receptive like, God, I'm ready to listen now. Is there anybody that's ever, life has whooped you and you finally is like, God, I'm listening now. I don't know about you, but God ain't got to whoop me no more. I, God is, he has my undivided attention. And that, my brothers and sisters, is when we are most receptive. Can you hear me now? Look at somebody beside you and say, I ain't got to go through nothing else for God to get my attention. Sometimes life circumstances causes our connection to be bad. We've been hurt. We've lost a loved one. We've been fired. We're experiencing financial challenges. When life is not working, we either try to get closer to, to hear from God or we keep trying to hear from someone else and we're no longer connected to the provider. Have you ever been talking to someone and the call dropped? God is asking you, God's like, I'm still here. I didn't move away from you. The closer you get to him, the better you hear. Some of us can't hear, not because God left us, but because we walked away from him. I'm at an age where I love being around children or old people more than anybody else. Y'all missed that in the back, didn't you? I said, I like little kids and seniors more than anybody else right now because the babies are pure hearted and they just came from God. Seniors, we like a Martin Lawrence and Eddie Murphy in life. We next, we up on deck for that upper room. Older people are getting ready to go back to God. They've learned their lessons. They live life, and they hear from God, babies and old folks. But those of us in the middle, we got a connection problem. I want to get back to a place. That's why Jesus said, if you want to see the kingdom of God, you must become what? Like one of these little ones. In this parable, God's word is the seed and our hearts are the ground. Last week, Pastor Dana talked about faith. We see in Romans 10, 17, it says this. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the what? Word of God. I'm going to say that again. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The only way that we can be certain that we have faith is by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But if that word is not received in good ground, the connection never occurs. 
the seed doesn't activate until it gets in good soil and dies. John 12, 24, listen, listen carefully. Unless a seed is buried in the ground, dead to the world, it is never any more than a grain of wheat. Did y'all hear what I just said? I said, if the seed doesn't go in the ground and die, it remains just a seed. And the reason many of us never grow, nothing grows in us, is because the word never gets in our hearts. The only way for you to grow as a Christian is that that word must penetrate your heart. David says, I have hidden his word in my heart that I might not sin against him. If you ain't reading, you ain't growing. You can't wait to get to church on Sunday and get it all from me. That would be like eating Sunday dinner and not eating anything else until next Sunday. And many of y'all are wondering, walking around spiritually malnourished, about to faint over the slightest stuff. You clicking over the slightest stuff. You got a short fuse because you ain't letting no seed get in you. Touch your neighbor and say, you need this word every day. If it is buried, it sprouts and reproduces itself many times over. Did y'all hear what I said? When the word gets in you, it sprouts and reproduces itself many times over. In the same way, anyone who holds on to life, just as it is, destroys that life. But if you let it go reckless in your love, you'll have it forever, real and eternal. I, I, I'm running out of time, so I'm going to go on and condense this. I'm, I'm running out of time. Because um, the people in the back going to start leaving in a minute. Number one, how do, we, how do we hear the word of God? Number one, y'all ready? Through hearing, through preaching, and teaching. How can they hear unless there's a preacher? How can they preach unless they've been sent? Romans 10, 14 through 15. Media team, y'all some bad boys back there. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? Are uh, y'all listen to me? The reason you're here on a Sunday morning is not out of religiosity. It's not because you had to. It's because you woke up this morning and said, I need to hear from God. How can I hear unless there's a preacher? The reason you are here, I'm different from your teacher. I'm different from your doctor. I'm different from your counselor. I have been sent. I didn't want to go, but I was sent. God arrested me back in 1988 and put me under his jurisdiction, put a word in my mouth. I ate his word. It was sweet to my taste, but soured in my belly. Come on, somebody. And, and, and like Jeremiah, I didn't want to talk about it, but every time I said I wasn't going to talk about it, it was like his word was like fire shut up in my bones. And so the reason you're here this morning is because God sent me to tell you his word is still true. It's still relevant. God's word will not return void. How else do I get his word? Everybody repeat after me, number two, through study and meditation. Everybody say, through study and meditation. Talk to me, Timothy. Timothy in 2 Timothy 2.15, he tells, Paul tells Timothy to study to show yourself approved as a workman who can rightly divide the word of truth. Y'all gonna run into people, the devil knows the word. Y'all ain't gonna help me teach today. The devil knows the Bible just like you do. And so you gotta be able to be able to know the word and rightly divide the word of truth because there'll be some people who will try to proof text you and to, and to use the Bible to, to try to support their argument, but you've always got to be ready to give an account for what you believe in, but do you have enough word to have a reasonable conversation to give hope for the salvation in which you believe? You've got to study to show yourself approved. Through application. Somebody say through application. It's not enough to hear the word, but you got to be what? Doers of the word. Look at your neighbor and say, you can't just hear it. You got to do it. The Bible tells us that when we hear the word but we don't do it, it's like going and looking in the mirror. You got a booger in your eye and you go to work with the same booger. You go to work, you go to work in your face, you, you look in the mirror and your face is dirty and you walk away, you don't wash your face and you go and somebody say, you got some on your face and you're like, oh, that's because I didn't make application. You got to not only hear it, but you got to what? Do it. You, we hear the word of God, we read the word of God. 
we, we hear it by, by listening to preaching on Sundays. We, we hear the word of God by studying. Uh, the, Psalm 1 says, blessed is the man or the woman who meditates on the word of God. Whatever they do, it shall prosper. Are y'all listening to me? The word meditate means to chew like a cow chews his cud. Did y'all know that cows don't have stomachs? So the only way that a cow can swallow grass, are y'all talking to me this morning? Listen, can you hear me now? The only way a cow can swallow grass with no stomach is that it's got to chew on what it's eating. It swallows it, throws it up, swallows it, throws it up until the grass is liquefied. Are you listening? You can't just read scripture one time. You got to chew it, swallow it, meditate on it. Chew it, swallow it, meditate on it. And when you do and it digests and gets in your bloodstream, it manifests into, into success and prosperity. It's not enough. You can't speak to the universe and it's going to manifest. The manifestation comes as a result of digestion. And the digestion comes in terms of what you eat. You are what you eat. And if you're not eating God's word, you're never going to be able to manifest the promises that are in his word. Some of y'all are missing promises and packages because you ain't digesting the seed that has the need that needs to be met. And you don't even recognize that everything that I need, he's already provided. He's just waiting for me to stand on what he already promised in his word. But if I don't digest the word, it's just going to remain dormant. Unless a seed goes into the ground and dies, it remains just a seed. But if I eat that seed, it's going to meet my need. Y'all look bored in the back. Can, can I tell you why we don't get it and then I'm going to let you go home? Can, I have, can y'all give me 10 more minutes? Watch this. When you look at the text, you discover that Jesus is using a parable about a farmer who goes out to sow seed. He's broadcasting the seed. And whenever they broadcast seed, they threw it far and wide. I can still see my granddad with his little pouch thrown over his shoulder. Out there in the seed, in the, in, the, in, the, in the field where he had plowed it and broken up the ground, he's throwing seed. And some of the seed made it and some of it didn't. Can I tell you the first kind of seed that don't make it? Seed that falls along a footpath. When I looked up the word footpath, we were in London, my wife and I, and Five pastors, Elgin and Candace went with us. And Elgin, you remember we was taking that, that shortcut through the apartments? Elgin, wave your hand. I just saw you come in. With. You remember we were going through and we was going to cut through the house. And the sign said, what, Elgin? Uh, no footpath. Footpath closed. Uh, well, we from Memphis. Uh, and it was shorter to take a shortcut. So instead of going around, we ignored the footpath sign. And I was prepared that if anybody stopped us, I was going to say, we from America. We didn't know. <laughs> we, we didn't know that we couldn't go. Watch this. Some of y'all had signs up that said no footpath. But people ignored your sign and walked over you anyway. And the reason, watch this, that you can't receive the seed is because so many people have walked over the path that nothing can grow on it. And y'all have had people violate your boundaries. And, your, and you came to church with a heart that's been walked on. And some of y'all can't even hear me now because every time a seed falls on your heart, the enemy comes and snatches it up. Somebody around you says something, you get distracted, and the vibe you had is gone because it's just a vibe and not a conviction. Because you've been offended, your heart has grown cold and callous. That's why some of y'all can't receive from the messenger because you got some offense against the messenger and he or she don't even know you mad at them. 
You sitting there with your jaws tight, can't receive a word that's been downloaded into me to give to you because you've allowed somebody to walk over you and a perceived offense is not really an offense because sometimes, many times, an offense is an expectation that has not been communicated and left unresolved so you can't receive nothing from nobody because you mad as hell. Are you listening to me? Have you ever been mad and can't hear? Have you ever been hurt and can't hear? And that's the only way you're going to be able to receive God's word is if you get your heart right. The first group of people who can't hear God's word are the people who've been walked on. Watch this. And the first person that walked on you ain't got nothing to do with the last person that, that walked on your path. Let me say that again in another way. What you mad at me about ain't got nothing to do with me. It's got everything to do with that offense you never resolved. You mad at your old pastor. And as soon as a new pastor says something that you don't like, all of that unresolved issue resurfaces as a wound where you can't receive what you need. All right, I'm going to move on to the next one. Miss Deborah, I don't think they resonated with. The second type of ground is where they throw the seed. DJ, they throw the seed, Newt, into gravel. And, and, and it sprouts up real quick. Calvin, but it don't go nowhere, Stephanie, because there's no deep roots. And the first sign that something happens, Robin, is snatched up because it was not rooted. All right, y'all didn't get that. I only want the country people who sat on the porch and ate watermelon to raise your hand. Corey, you ain't never eat no watermelon. In Arkansas, they didn't have watermelon in Arkansas. I didn't see you raise your hand, principal. When you sat on the porch, Corey, and you spit your watermelon, what did you do with your watermelon seeds, Corey? You spit them out. And tell me, somebody raise your hand if you came back a week later and what had happened. Some of them had sprouted. And then you being like me, like a little kid, you like, ooh, I'm gonna add some watermelon. <laughs> I just spit the seed out and it's growing. And then a week after that, you came back and what happened to your little sprout? It was gone. Why? Because it was not rooted. People come to church, they get excited, they get goosebumps. They come and join the church, but they don't get connected. They are not in nobody's connect group. They not in Bible study. They ain't in no ministry. And the first time somebody hurts your feelings. <laughs> you coming back. I'm like, where's so-and-so? Where they at? They gone. Why? Because you hurt their feelings. Church hurt. Will y'all help me real quick? Can anybody define what church hurt is? Let me tell you about church hurt that I heard in London. And y'all see me, y'all tell me if it's the same as American church hurt. This woman from North Korea was one of the speakers. She couldn't even speak English. She had a translator. You can't practice Christianity in North Korea. It's a death sentence. Her and her husband were found guilty of sharing the gospel. Her husband was imprisoned, tortured, died. She was thrown into a women's prison, and they tortured her with electric shock. She prayed while she was on the table, God, please help me to endure this suffering. And she said, the Lord spoke to her and says, I want you to think about how my son felt when he hung on the cross. 
She said as she lay on the extra electrocution table as they were torturing her, that peace came over her to the point where she was gazed out. They thought she was dead, and they took her back to the cell. She wasn't, in, in, she wasn't dead. She said God kept her in perfect peace while her mind was stayed on him. Then she was not allowed to preach the gospel or they would have executed her on site. So the best place, watch this, for her to go and share the word of God was in, a, in, the, in the cell that was built for 50 people, but they had 150 women packed in there. As a matter of fact, she, should, she could not go to the bathroom because if you got up off the floor and went to go to the bathroom, you missed your spot to lay down at night. But she said what she did to, in order to keep sharing the gospel is the best place to meet to have Bible study was in the restroom where it stank to high heavens, but nobody would bother them because it stank so bad. So she's in the women's prison next to the latrine sharing the word of God and she kept on preaching in spite of the fact that they electrocuted her. She escaped from North Korea, went to South Korea, and now is living out her faith. But she didn't stop even through torture. Is that church hurt? We walk around talking about we hurt because somebody hurt your feelings. We got people who are being tortured in prisons because they're sharing the word of God. Is your hurt really that bad? Some people can't hear because they're not deeply rooted. We give you avenues at New Direction to get connected through Bible study. We have Bible study every week at New Direction. Every week we're studying the Bible in community, in small groups called connect groups that get you rooted. The Bible says that, that, that we should be like a tree firmly planted by the rivers of water, yielding forth its fruit in a season. Whatsoever you do shall prosper. Even in wintertime, your leaves stay green because the roots, if you're rooted in connect groups, if you're rooted in ministry, little stuff don't bother you. You can't chase me off my spot. You can't run me out of my own church. Guess what, y'all? There's no such thing as a perfect church or a perfect pastor. If you find one, please don't join it because you'll mess it up. You can only change what you're a part of. Can I say this for the back? I said you can only change what you remain committed to. What would you do every time if your spouse made you mad and you're talking about you want to get a divorce? What would you do if you go to work every time somebody made you mad at work and you quit your job every time somebody made you mad? You got to commit, stay rooted. The only way you're fruited is if you're rooted. All right, y'all, y'all look like y'all mad, so let me go over here. We got ground that's been walked on. Some of y'all can't receive the word because what? Somebody has hurt you. There's a fence that has been unresolved, and you wear that stuff. Can't nobody say nothing to you because your heart is hard. The second ground is ground that people are too shallow. You haven't been rooted in connect groups. You haven't been rooted in ministry. And the first little thing that comes along moves you off your spot, and you're ready to leave. Y'all ready for the third one? It's when the seed falls amongst weeds. And the weeds choke out. Lord, help me preach. The weeds choke out the, the fruit of what could have been produced. And the weeds represent worry and ambition and greed. Some, I heard somebody else watching one of my wife's shows that she loved watching. I don't like watching. I just pop in and out because I don't like watching her stuff. But this man on the show, was it real, the Housewives of Huntsville or something? <laughs> and, and, and the daddy was visiting the son, and he says, son, watch this, Calvin. He says, son, I'm proud of you. He's like, thanks, dad. He's like my age. His daddy's a little older, 20 years older. He says, but I'm worried about you because you're busy making a living but not busy making a life. He says, I don't want you to keep on. He said, I took my first cruise at 50. He says, and when I finally realized I had been working and chasing money, 
my wife's hair was gray, and my kids were gone. Jesus says, I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. He says, don't be worried about what you're going to wear and what you're going to eat. He says, look at the birds of the air. They don't worry about where they're going to eat or where they're going to sleep at. And God always feeds them. Look at the flowers of the field. They spin. They're beautiful. They don't spin or toil. God takes care of them if his eye is on the sparrow. Y'all not talking to me up here. Is there anybody that knows that he's Jehovah Jireh, that he will provide? I ain't got to worry about nothing. The Bible tells me in Philippians 4, do not be anxious about anything, but pray about everything. And the Lord will guard your heart and your mind. Can somebody shout, the Lord will provide. I got to go. This is the last thing I want to tell you. He says, but there's another kind of seed. Somebody say there's another kind of seed. This seed falls on good ground. Somebody say good ground. What makes ground good ground? I told you my granddaddy would sow seed, but he didn't sow seed until after he plowed up the ground. Talk to me, somebody in here. What the Lord requires of us is a contrite spirit and a broken heart. Holiness is what I long for, but brokenness is what I need. How many of y'all know that God's got to come and break some stuff up in you in order for his word to be able to yield forth a harvest? The Bible says that when good seed falls on good ground, that you'll produce produce a bumper crop. When I looked up the word bumper crop, it says an unusual large harvest. Can somebody help me real quick? How many of y'all don't just want a harvest? I want a bumper crop. Well, you got to allow that word to fall on a broken heart, a broken spirit. You got to tell the Lord, Lord, teach me. I'm ready to receive your word. And when we're open to receive God's word, that's when the harvest comes. I'm just talking to a hundred of y'all who are standing in need of a harvest this morning. And the Lord God says that my word is still true, that my word is inspiring, that my word is still true. His word will go out and it will accomplish something. Look at your neighbor and say God's word will accomplish something. God said in the Old Testament, in Deuteronomy, he says if you keep the words of the law and don't change it, he says I will move your enemies out of the way. I will give you vineyards you didn't plant. I will put you in houses you didn't build. Look at your neighbor and say, get ready for your harvest. Jesus said that if you keep my commandments, he says these signs shall follow. He says miracles, signs and wonders shall follow those that believe. If you ask, it shall be given. If you knock, the door shall be open. If you seek, you will find. Can 200 people stand up on your feet and say, can you hear me now? God's word is a seed and I'm looking for my harvest. Shake your neighbor's hand and say, I'm looking for a harvest. I'm looking for a bumper crop. Do me a favor, bump shoulders with three people and say, I need a bumper crop. In 2023, I need a bumper crop on my job, in my finances, in my family, in my ministry. Bump somebody else and say, I need a bumper crop. Eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men. What God's about to do, he's about to plant a word in you. I just need 70 of y'all to run to the stage and say, and bring your seed in your heart and say, I believe that God's going to manifest every promise over my life. I need 70 people to come to the stage and believe God for the seed that was sown in your heart this morning. If you believe that the best is yet to come, bring your seed to the altar. If you believe you got a bumper crop coming, bring it to the altar. If you believe that God's about to open up a door, bring it to the altar and stand on the promises and say, God, manifest. Manifest my harvest. Manifest the job. Manifest my healing. Manifest my breakthrough. Manifest my deliverance. Manifest my favor. Manifest open doors. Manifest open windows. Manifest. 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 Eyes haven't seen. Ears haven't heard. What God is about to do in your life. Hey, everybody.
everybody. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you so much. Listen, there's so much more to explore on this channel. We've got podcasts. We've got sermons. We've got prayers. We've got behind the scenes things that take place in my life that other people are not privy to. But because you're a part of my channel, you're going to get it. So make sure you explore all of the features on the Dr. Stacey L. Spencer YouTube channel. And make sure you tell your friends to subscribe. I'll see you soon.